This video is sponsored by Established Titles. Very epic. How's it going, guys? Welcome to the Ballista Build Part Two. Last week we we had we had some fun. It was cool. It was, was alright. But not what I'm looking for. I want power, I want speed, I want range. We gotta get this prod right, get it nice and strong. I got some pretty cool ideas. Let's get this done. Right after a word from our sponsor. Part of the human condition is to be tortured by our most cringe memories. A recurring one that I have is of the first 26 years of my life when I was not a Scottish Lord. Ugh. Ugh. Thank goodness for established titles that promptly fixed that issue. Established titles is a project based on an old Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds, which in English is lords, or like lady if you're a lady. Established titles lets you purchase as little as one square foot of land in Scotland, which grants you the title of lord. Grants you the title of lord. You don't have to be Nick or Bill. Lord Nick. Lord Bill. Nah, you're talking. That's somebody I could respect. You could be Lord on your credit card, on your Costco card, on your plane tickets, on a baby. Oh no, that guy just has a baby. But you could buy land for the baby, and then the baby would be Lord Baby. So you're putting you are putting Lord on a baby. Hmm. Lord Baby Bill. <laughs> That's a baby I could respect. Look, it's novelty, okay? I said it. But it makes an epic last minute gift. We got those holidays coming around the corner and they got a big, big Black Friday sale going on. It's never been more affordable to be a baby I could respect. And on top of being an epic gift, they're actually doing a lot of good too. They're partnered with One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future so that for every purchase, they commit to planting a tree. Pretty cool. Love a good tree. Go ahead and check out the link in the description or the pinned comment to become a lord or a lady today. Thank you so much to Established Titles for sponsoring the video. Back to it. The defeated corpse of my first attempt. Very sad. But there is a silver lining. I was going through his wallet for no reason in particular. Found an organ donor card. That pretty much means you can scoop them out and see what you can find before they start stinking. <laughs> yeah, it smells fine. Testies, testies, one, two, three. Don't get me wrong, guys, my first attempt was a lot of fun, but I'm not looking for fun, I'm looking for scared. Which ends up being more fun anyways. I've recovered all the fiberglass rods, that's eight 72 inch fiberglass rods and eight 48 inch. I'm also adding two to this pile and four to this pile. More fiberglass, yeah, that's epic of course, but here's where we get scary. Allow me to introduce you to my new best friend, Schedule 80 PVC. Some of you guys probably never even heard of this stuff. I've known about it for days now, just saying. It's the big brother of Schedule 40 PVC, almost double the wall thickness, greater tensile strength, greater impact resistance, and it's gray, which makes it look cooler, which makes it faster. We got a whole honking lot of that stuff, whole honking lot of this stuff. I say, let's get snipping. We're cutting 75 inches off of both pipes. Now our fiberglass bundles are gonna be a whopping 11 rods per pipe. That's six short ones and five long ones. All 11 of the fiberglass rods will fit into the inch and a quarter schedule 80, but the fit will be so snug that if you even have too many of the reflective tape thingies on one end, it won't fit. So as you see here for the six short ones, I've got three of the reflective tapes on one end and three are on the other end. And of course, roughly the same is true with the five long ones. And the second thing to remember is the same thing goes with the electrical tape that I told you about the reflective tape. You can only wrap about one layer or it won't fit in the PVC. Anymore. So go ahead and line up all your fiberglass with that trick I taught you in the first video and we're gonna do a one layer wrap. Fiberglass rods should have an inch and a half on both ends, and we're gonna do this for both pipes. I can <laughs> barely bend one of them. Ah, baby! Ah! <laughs> so we got the limbs made and looking real nice, not gonna lie, but we still have the same issue. Annoying ah uh, wind. We still got the same issue. Where do I attach the bowstring to without chopping up the limbs to get some T sockets on there that ultimately just end up weakening the prop? I was thinking about that the other day and that's when it hit me, some garage door pulley hardware. Some, 
Suspiciously homemade looking garage door pulley hardware. This stuff looks so weird, doesn't it? It looks so homemade. It almost looks like if somebody thought they had a really good idea and they went to the hardware store and got some eighth inch flat bar and brought it home and cut it down to size and drilled it and bent it and shaped it and smoothed it out and then looked at it and went, oh, this is garage door pulley hardware that I could have got for 99 cents. What a goofball that guy would be. Here's a setup. Put the hardware through a 3 8 inch thimble. Use a couple of washers as kind of like a ramp to slide the hardware up onto the spacers on the pulley. And then some kind of a rod or a nail to center everything. Preferably something smaller than 3 8 and with a point on it so you can slip it through all the misaligned layers and do this sort of little twisty spin move thing. Lines everything up perfect. And there you go. Now for that extra little bit of reinforcement on the ends of the pipes, we're going to use these reducer bushings where we used the caps last time. Functionally, they're basically just going to be open-faced end caps but I do like that they got these flat surfaces. I think it'll make stacking the pipes on top of each other a lot easier to drill the hole. It'll also probably be easier to center the hole too. So let's get these things on there. We're gonna use the regular purple PVC primer, but instead of that cringe regular PVC cement, we're gonna use some heavy duty. And one really quick thing to remember when you're cementing on the second set of bushings. Clamp the end that already has a bushing on it down to a flat surface. This way you can get the flat surfaces on both bushings lined up with each other on both ends of the pipe. I stuck a 2x4 in my vise to elevate the ends of the pipes up to the level of the platform on my drill press and epically those reducer bushings really really did make it a lot easier to get a straight drill through the ends of the two pipes. So when you get the one end drilled through go ahead and pass a bolt through it that'll keep everything lined up so you can bring it back to the drill press and get the other end done. Now to attach the pulleys on there, a little bit of a hassle but I think it was worth it. I used all nylon lock nuts. This will make sure that nothing wiggles itself loose and pops off under tension. It's a, it's a little more work but I think it's worth it for the safety. And if you got a drill or a driver with a socket set, it's really not so bad. The order is bolt through the pipe, lock nut, pulley, lock nut, pipe, lock nut. You got that? Got that? Remember that? Cool. Good. Now here's a super simple holding solution I came up with. It is temporary, but I still learned some pretty good stuff from it. So easy to make. I took a couple of 2x4s. I cut some holes that are a little bit bigger than the diameter of the PVC. Then I sliced those 2x4s down the middle, essentially creating some homemade pipe clamps. Then I screwed two of those halves onto a piece of plywood that I previously cut a hole in. Another couple of 2x4s on the back of the plywood for a lot of extra stability. And here's something that I was initially doing as like a luxury nicety thing, but it ended up being pretty vital. Remember that vinyl tubing? that in the first video I said you guys would understand later and then nobody understood it because I did a bad job explaining what it was for. Well, we're using more. When I was first lining the clamps here with it, I was thinking it would be more of like a cushion in between the wood and the PVC. But as I was drawing the ballista back, I was noticing that vinyl was actually acting as a bushing. As the limbs were getting drawn back, it was actually allowing the PVC to kind of pivot inside of the clamp without sliding back and forth. So I'm definitely taking that into the final build. That was pretty epic. In the middle, I drilled a hole straight through so I could put a big bolt through this it. This is where the vast majority of the holding strength comes from. I do put a couple of little screws in the ends right here, but I would say that bolt bolt is pretty dang vital. And there it is, that's a dang thing. It goes on the picnic table, real simple, about five screws going in underneath, and then you got the support beams on the back. Very sturdy for testing. All that was really left was for me to string it up and get a feel of what I'm really dealing with here. And man, do I have to deal. <sighs> Well, I got what I asked for. I can't draw it back by hand. There's an unexpected consequence to that. I can't draw it back by hand. I don't, I don't know how to test it. <laughs> I don't even know if it's safe to test it. This string is looking like it's uh, getting stretched to its limits. This is the original thickness. <laughs> Sheesh. It's looking a little precarious there. Let's see how far I can get it.
slightly more serious rope later. Let's give this a shot. After a valiant attempt to behind the leg row the bowstring, I kind of realized that the hand drawing thing really not gonna work. This ain't your grandma's picnic table ballista, that's for sure. So I came to the conclusion. About to rig up some serious caveman stuff. First I create this little double loop of 550 paracord that's gonna be super strong. Then I use a separate piece of 550 cord to tie that double loop to the ratchet. And look, I know everybody who uses these ratchet straps on a regular basis probably already knew this, but I discovered it for the first time and it was pretty epic. Instead of me attaching the long strap to the bowstring and then the ratchet to the table, I attach the ratchet end to the bowstring, which once you put the strap through the ratchet, you can pull on the strap and the ratchet actually functions as like a doubler pulley. That's pretty, uh, pretty revolutionary, I think, at least in these parts. <laughs> once I get it drawn back as far as I can, I lock the ratchet, get a few more inches out of that. Very good locking mechanism uh, for the trigger mechanism. Very high tech, you like it? So here is not quite full draw, the table's not long enough for that. When I build the actual frame, it'll be longer than the table and you'll be able to get a full draw out of it. But this is the PVC arrow, it's 14 ounces, almost a pound. 396.8 grams, which is... 6,124.9 grains. I don't know, if you're like some Bugs Life ant who measures stuff in grains, there you go. There it is, boys. We're off to a good start, I think. That is uh, 66 yards, nearly 200 feet. Again, not at full draw. We'll get more power out of it, don't you worry. But man, that sound, that sound is epic. Here's me shooting my foam target. Very cool, very fun. Now, next up is my wooden arrow bolt. Let, let's be honest here. This thing is a certified javelin. This thing's large. It's a whole rake handle with a nail in the end of it. It's pretty cool. It's a pound and nine ounces, pretty heavy. That's uh, 708 grams, 10,937.4 grains for the bugs. Now with the way that the PVC went, I was kind of thinking maybe this might, it might be dipping into the danger zone a little bit, getting a little too close to my neighbor's house for comfort. I'm already a certified that neighbor. I'm not trying to get involved with any cops to be honest. So I was thinking no more distance tests until I could get to like a big field or something. But then I missed the target resulting in an accidental distance test. Pretty epic. So even with the heavier arrow and at the reduced angle, it still made it about 150 feet. But look how it freaking slides. Like it's on an icy lake. There's just like so much energy still in that thing. I reduced the angle again. Oh, this will hit it for sure. And finally, honestly, one of my favorite moments in ZNA history. <laughs> it was at this precise moment that I remember Dan a long time ago had brought over these. I honestly don't even know what these are. They might be for like putting sticks in the ground or something. Or hey, maybe Goodwill keeps ballista broadheads in stock. You never know. But it's a ballista broadhead today, that's for sure. Gotta get that good thumbnail. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, looks good. First time actually I ever had to push an arrow through that target. Seeing lots of potential here. Now here's a final shot. I wanted to get one of the camera behind the target. A uh, little freaky thought to keep in mind if you want. Imagine staring down the barrel of this thing and thinking, okay, I'll be fine. As soon as it shoots, I'm gonna jump out of the way and I'll, oh, boom, you're freaking dead. Oh my gosh, you're so dead. Guys. I'm loving this thing. I don't remember the last time I've been so excited for a build and that it's like maintained my interest for like a month at this point. I'm literally having trouble sleeping because I'm just like building it in my brain and going over the next step and the next step and I'm so excited. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge shout out to Established Titles for making this whole thing possible. They actually have me sponsored for the rest of the year so... Oh, stuff is just like pretty good right now. <laughs> See you guys in the next one. Talk to you later. Bye.